five o'clock shadow and Holly just said she's Sicilian. Like, okay, what do I know about Sicilian women at 19? Mm -hmm. But you can read about that in another book. Um, Are there any stories you want to share about your involvement with, with any of them? Um, any special memories or? Well, the fact that they were guys and I didn't know and you mean they were living with you and you didn't know they were guys? They said they were girls. They didn't say they were, I didn't say they were good looking women. I thought they were odd looking. So you took in these four? No, people? they took me in. Oh, like they took pigeon. you in. Like a pigeon. They needed someone to come up with 90 bucks a month. Oh. It was an apartment, one room, in back of a little red schoolhouse off of 6th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And they needed a place where they could experiment and make believe they're girls and they'd go out on dates. Holly at the time was going out with a printer. How I know that is because he had a little paper hat and he'd come with his apron from a Brooklyn uh -huh. newspaper place. And they would go on dates. And I worked seven days a week from 10 in the morning till 10 at night. So I really, you know, was happy to come home and find the bed available so I could lay down. Uh -huh. Then one day when I was getting ready to go to work, Holly, I say, uh, the timing was tense. I had to be in the shower and so did she. And she said, well, you don't mind, darling. And she got in the shower and there was this pachanga like that on Holly. And I said, you're a guy. And she says, yeah. And I said, well, she said, get over it. We're all guys. And I thought, oh, geez, really? Candy? Guy? Taffy? Guy? I said, I kind of, kind of knew that. We're all guys. Now get over it. Give me the soap. Let's go. I got a date. It's important. Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. So I thought, they took me in. I've been their pigeon. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was paying all the rent. Uh -huh. they, they told me they were chipping in for the other half. I was so stupid it hurts. Anyway. So tell me about meeting a famous transgender personality who's now dead, Marsha P. Johnson. Marsha, pay it no mind, Johnson. Okay, but look. Marsha pay it no mind. I was going through cans of garbage in those days when your house was robbed. They sometimes would hide it in a garbage can. And I kept on covering the garbage cans on Grove Street and Christopher Street and coming up with Russian gold coins, double-headed eagles, Rembrandt pictures going, gee, this is, I'm very lucky today. I'm going through the cans and there's this big commotion on Hudson Street where Christopher intersects. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun isn't going down yet, but there's this commotion. So I go through the crowd and I'm looking and in a fur coat of some kind in hot weather, it was hot. There's a kneeling figure in fur, like, and I'm only seeing the back of her wig. So I don't know what's going on, but she ain't moving and she's tying up all the tunnel traffic and all the pedestrian traffic and all the path traffic. And in those days, they didn't have cars guys in squad cars they had patrolmen and the one patrolman is telling her to move and she's not moving she's I'm going wow if a cop told me to move I'd move what's going on all of a sudden he takes out his baton his nightstick and he goes to I said move and he goes like bum and all of a sudden her hand comes up takes the stick and goes Phew. And he's knocked out and she drops the stick. I thought, gay, gay. Then she goes right back. A normal person would have ran like, no, you don't knock out a cop and not that ninth precinct. No, they would rape little boys. These are married men with children raping young 13 year old male prostitutes. You must understand, she ain't moving. Now the cop comes by. Move it, bitch, we, you're dead tries the baton thing, she just grabs it, pokes his eye out, drops him. I said, gay, gay. Well, this went on, to make a long story short, five times. They finally come with a wagon. It looked like when you pack away King Kong and take them into a gurney. She's in the chains, she's knocking them, she knocks them all out. And she goes back to that spot and like this. I'm going, gay. I've, I've heard of the Brothers Grimm, you know, five with one blow, knocking people out, 
He's got five of New York's finest on the ground, unconscious. There's the paddy wagon. It's now five o'clock, and the sun is sinking. And she goes, okay, God, thank you. And she gets up and what's all this mess about? Then the, I remember chains and they put her in a wagon. And then there was a court appearance. And she's in front of a judge. And the judge says, is it true, Mr. Michaels? Is it true? that you knocked out five of New York's finest officers, one after the other, and she said, well, not really, Your Honor. I mean, these were bad men, and I was a little girl, and they were trying to hurt me with their big sticks, and what's a girl to do, Your Honor? He goes, dismissed. Wait a minute, let me go back, because the way you told it to me yeah. is she told the judge, well, Your Honor, I was having a conversation with... Oh, right. Right, so go back and retell it. Re -tell it. So you went, you found out there was a court date, yeah, and you and you went to court because you knew this, this date I, was coming up. I knew up. it was going to be her day, and I yeah. wanted to get her story. Because when I saw this feat of, she handled this these cops like they were mosquitoes, you know, she just blew them off and went back because she told the judge, Your Honor, I'm just a little girl, and when the... God called me on, you know, like if you were a phone, he called me. And so I got down on my knees and I was listening to God. And God was telling me something. And these men with sticks were trying to interfere with my telephone call from God, Your Honor. And you know, you know, it's not like when a regular person calls up on the phone, Your Honor. It's like when God calls you up on the phone, you answer it. And I answered my telephone call, and these men with sticks were trying to hurt me. So I did what anybody would do if you're talking to God. You just get rid of them. But I had to listen to that phone call. Mr. Michaels, you tell me God called you on the phone? And that's, yes, Your Honor. And I had to listen to the whole thing. You don't just put God on hold. You, you, and these men with sticks, and, and that's all that happened, Your Honor. So help me. And he did. He dismissed the case. She walked out of there. And I went after her and made my business. Because I noticed the queens when they would walk down Christopher Street at, at 6 and 7 in the morning after they'd done all their getting their johns liquored up and taking the money. And there'd be Marsha like in bedraggled stockings and beer can rollers in her wig, you know, going, Hi, good morning, everybody. They would cross the street to avoid her. I went right for her. I said, I want this person to be my friend because I never see nobody, not even, not even Rocky Graziano could knock out five cops in a row, like Marsha P. Johnson. And when we became friends, I asked her what the P stood for. And she said, oh, P is for pay it no mind. And you were friends with her for many years, right? Oh, she took care of me, yeah. Yeah, she was a good friend true friend when she had a lover and he had money and she always would find her papa dollar he was always good looking and she'd say well you won't mind if my friend he's my best friend sasha if you could give him a room of his own and anything he wants you know like room service or anything you could do that couldn't you certainly miss johnson certainly i don't know i was a very lucky person we, we should stop her because okay okay an oral, oral contract so